and the greatest sacrifice that he made. Because his life was littered with sacrifices. It was sprinkled with sacrifices. Everywhere you look in his life, he had given something up. Which shows us that it's not just going to be one time. It's going to have to be a personality disposition. So he's in Uhud. And for those of you who do know or don't know, Uhud was a time that was very difficult for the believers. Because they, the archers, the young archers, had not listened to the Prophet Muhammad when he told them, do not chase this war, spoils, money, don't come after it. He said, I need you to stay up on top of this mountain. And it, no matter what's happening, if you see the birds eating our bodies, don't come off of this mountain. You are our last protection. And in Uhud, it looked like the believers had won. At one point, it looked like the Muslims had triumphed, had succeeded. And all of a sudden, these archers saw all the believers going and chasing these spoils of war, this money, all the armor and the gold and everything. And they became incensed with the love of wealth. They wanted it. They wanted to get part of that. They wanted everything that Musa bin Umar had left behind. And at this point, this is when all damage broke loose. Khalid bin Walid, who was not Muslim at the time, he led a, a resurgence, a second attack around the back of the mountain. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was attacked to the point where his helmet dug into his cheeks. And there were companions that had to jump in front of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to take arrows that were flying at him. And there were even rumors swirling in the battle that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had died. And Musa bin Omer, he sees this happening. And he has the flag that has the kalima on it to represent the side of the believers. He has that in his hands and he sees the Prophet ﷺ is being attacked. So he starts yelling takbir and he starts calling out these chants to draw the attention away from the army that's attacking the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And he takes his horse and he rides as fast as he can and he curves to take the army away from the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And it works. The plan that he has, it works because they draw away from the attacking the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. But now they know and he knows that he's gone. In that moment, he had to make a split decision. Who do I love more? Myself or the Messenger of Allah? You know, the decisions that we, don't, we have to make, they don't demand us to give our life. We're not sitting in a battlefield saying, who do I love more, the Prophet ﷺ or myself? We're sitting in bed at Fajr time. Who do I love more? Allah and His Messenger or myself? We're sitting at work when we know that there's decisions that might be unethical. We're sitting and watching something that might be destroying our heart. Material on the television or on the computer that might be eating us alive. And the question we have to ask ourselves, we don't have to go and throw our bodies into the battlefield. We don't have to do that. We just have to say at this moment, who do I love more? Allah and His Messenger or my own self? And the Prophet Muhammad said, none of you will believe until I, I am more beloved to them than their own selves. So Musa bin Omer, he runs and he takes his horse and he knows that this is it. He knows that he's going to be trampled. He knows that he's running into an army where he is one and there's 70, 80, 90 people about to attack him. But he wants to make sure that he holds that flag of Islam high. And so one person on the other side of the side of the Quraysh, he targets the hand that he sees because this is a, a symbol of strength. The flag being up in the air is a symbol of strength. That the Muslims are still strong. So he takes his sword and he takes the arm that's holding the flag and he cuts that arm and he chops it off. And Musa bin Omer, before the flag can even tumble to the ground, he drops his sword from his other hand and grabs the flag and keeps it in the air and says, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ He says that Muhammad is but a messenger. Other messengers before him were also killed. And the same man who cut his right arm then cuts his left. So the flag begins to fall and he grabs it now with whatever he has left of his arms and holds it to his chest. And he says, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ He says that Muhammad is but a messenger and other messengers were killed before him. And then he gets swarmed by the rest of the people. And they said that at the time of his death, there were over 70 sword and speared wounds on his body. That was the answer to his question, who do I love more? Allah's messenger or myself. And then afterwards, afterwards, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored what was in his heart. 
And he put this ayah in Surah Ali Imran in the description of the battle of Uhud. You find this ayah, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرَّسُولٌ Muhammad is nothing except a messenger. Messengers came before him too. Afa if in case he died, aw qutila, or if he got killed, and qalabtum ala aqabikum, are you going to turn back on your heels? Faman yanqalib ala aqibay, the one who turns back on his heels, falan yadurra Allah shay'a. He could not harm Allah in anything. Wa sayajzi Allahu shakirin. And Allah will soon reward the shakirin, those who are grateful. When Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa looked at the body of Umayyad, you know the, the shuhada were being given salams on the battlefield. These young men were give, being given salams by the, the, because the Prophet sallallahu had instructed us, even to this day, that we're supposed to say salam on the shuhada. For they respond to the salams according to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa